Banjo was announced for Smash! Well, E3 wrapped up two, two or three weeks ago, and I think I'm finally ready to talk about it. I know in my last video I said I'd do this whole cool video showcase with footage from E3, and I didn't get as much footage as I wanted to in California itself at the show, uh, but I do have a little bit, and I am going to share my impressions of the um, six, I think, major press conferences uh, this year. As many of you know, I live in Arizona, which is very close to California. LA is a six hour drive, give or take. And I definitely made the drive up there for the show. So I have some footage of some driving, and I have some footage of me going to different places, and some footage at the actual show. And I do give impressions in California on footage, so I will show off as much of that as possible. Some of the footage is not that great, and a lot of it was very impromptu, and I didn't have like the right lighting and everything, but uh, it is a little bit different than this room that I'm always in. So the Sunday before E3, I started the drive in the morning, and the goal was to make it to my Airbnb before the Microsoft conference started. Of course, that did not happen. I mean, I left on time, just that my car was having some some issues. So the first footage that you see is actually my second time stopping when I had to go in there and figure out what's going on. So because of the delays and the constant stopping to just readjust things and make sure everything was in place, I ended up being about an hour and a half late, which means that the Microsoft conference started while I was still driving. So I had the brilliant idea of turning on the conference in my car not watching, obviously, but listening. So it was a very interesting experience. I mean, obviously, I went back and I rewatched a lot of it, uh, but it 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 just I've never experienced a press conference like that. That's I don't know if I recommend it. You probably want to see the gameplay, you know, uh, which ironically there wasn't that much of. So I guess I didn't miss all that much. Anyway, I got to my Airbnb, got that all sorted out, and by that time it was already mid-afternoon, so I left, and I kind of wandered the neighborhood, uh, driving-wise, didn't really walk. I ended up going to the beach and filming some impressions there. So I finally did make it to California. I am obviously here at the beach, the ocean, and I have seen the Microsoft and the best of press conferences. I think Cyberpunk had a great showing, with Keanu Reeves showing up. Like, a lot of the times, celebrity appearances and these random people who aren't associated with video games, it doesn't, it doesn't always go well, and I thought this one did. I mean, he wasn't... <laughs> he was trying to get into it, and kind of wasn't, but it just worked really well, and he's just, he's just a cool dude, and it, it was cool. And we know it's coming in April, so... I'm glad we have a release date because this game has existed for a very long time and I only have good good thoughts and hopes for this game. Yeah, it was just an overall good stream of constant games. Uh, indie games, full-on games, new reveals, first party. Um, it was just all kind of there. And I mean, we got to look at Gears, we got to look at Halo, Battletoads, uh, Double Fine now joining Xbox Game Studios, uh, right? I, I thought they would add at least one more, and I was right, my predictions were on point in that one single aspect. Before the conference, I did not expect all that many Project Scarlet details. I did think we were going to see it, get a name, and like I said, 2020. Uh, well, I got 2020, the easy prediction right, because uh, they did not show up anything else besides that. They talked about it a lot, hyped it up, they gave us some good specs, but uh, beyond that... Oh, and Halo Infinite. Launch title, great, I think that's a perfect plan. Uh, do it like the original game, the original first game. And then for Bethesda, that, that's one of those press conferences where you wonder, did they really need all that time? Uh, it was about an hour and a half, if I remember correctly, and they did show a lot of cool stuff, a lot of new stuff too. But again, I look back at everything, it's, 
say, you know, maybe just a one hour would have been good enough. Uh, they addressed the Fallout 76 stuff, and I thought they were going to do it in more of a jokey manner, and that ended up not being the case. They were pretty straightforward and apologetic, and they did not make a joke out of things. So I actually like that better. It, it just worked. Uh, it just felt more real and genuine. And that's another thing. The developers that would show up to show off their games and talk about them, they just, they seem so filled with passion. And they just, they felt real, you know? Like, they were talking from experience, not here's the script I had to read, which they actually did have to read a script, but it actually sounded good, you know? Anyway, I love Wolfenstein, so I, I got I got my Wolfenstein build there uh, with Youngblood and Confirmed Co-op. That excites me so much. Uh, I really hope I get to play that on the show floor. It's absolutely going to be there. It's coming out in June, so they are not going to hold off on that. You guys have no idea how scared I am to have my camera here with all the sand everywhere. And I have my tripod shoved into the sand as well, and it really terrifies me. For the second day, I went down to the convention center, met up with some friends, uh, met a lot of new people that day, actually, the day before E3. Uh, for Ubisoft, I watched them before I left to go to the convention center, and then for Square Enix, I was still at the convention center, so I kind of watched on my phone. That's the one press conference I didn't get to see in full and I haven't really gone back to yet. I got to see chunks because my internet wasn't that great and the connection was like the video quality wasn't Ooh, yeah. so i i got like bits and pieces of that first up in the morning was ubisoft and yeah I've, they felt really light this year i mean they had a really strong opening with watchdogs legion but but beyond that it was, it was it's pretty tame there weren't any crazy exciting announcements and they kind of just abruptly ended it which was kind of weird not a bad press conference but just nothing nothing that really but besides watchdogs really stands out no nintendo at ubisoft i thought i thought that was going to be a thing that happens every year now uh not quite apparently so yeah, tomorrow I plan to film a little bit on the show floor. Now that it'll be open, uh, I'll have I'll have a decent amount of time between appointments to do that. Now, even though Sony won't have their own booth and Microsoft again won't have a booth, uh, there'll still be a lot of interesting things to see. E3 is always a spectacle. There's always crazy giant sculptures and flashing lights and just things to see. Um, so it'll still be exciting. And surprise! I learned how to grow my hair at will! Not really. I am editing this video now a month later after I recorded it and I realized I did not talk about Nintendo. Nintendo, who had, like every year, a pretty good showing. Not crazy mind-blowing every single second, but also not, not terrible, not just mediocre, not even just good, just great. Uh, like again, every single year. A lot of it was just updates on stuff we already knew about, Luigi's Mansion, uh, Astral Chain, and they also gave us updates on Link's Awakening and Animal Crossing, which, which we got its full reveal. I thought it'd be more of a showcase for the entire show, but it makes sense that it wasn't because there was a delay, a March 2020 delay, which is both fortunate and unfortunate. Uh, it's fortunate because I don't really need it this year. I've got enough to play this year. Unfortunate because I want it this year. I I don't need it, but I, I want it. It's Animal Crossing, and the sooner the better. Uh, but I I will survive having to wait. Uh, besides that, the the direct had a lot of a lot of smaller announcements sprinkled about the usual. Oh hey, here's this third party game from five years ago. Have at it on Switch. <laughs> Why not? Uh, they had Resident Evil Five and Six. Uh, sure, okay, let that Resident Evil collection keep growing on Switch, and they also had the Nino Kuni remasters coming to Switch, which is, which is pretty good. I played that on PlayStation 3, but I never finished it, so I might pick that up here. Uh, there was Alien Isolation. Okay, sure. Switch owners, go for it. Why, why not? Uh, and then the, the ending. The ending is really what Nintendo always has down pretty well. 
Uh, they are always good at leaving us with that one last thing that, that sets the tone for everything else. And this time they did a double whammy because they, not only did we get Banjo Kazooie in Smash, which I have, I, I will probably make a whole entire separate video on that. What an incredible announcement and a lot of feelings and emotions for that amount, that, that announcement. Uh, but we also got the Breath of the Wild sequel announced. I had I had zero expectation of. I I didn't think that was. I may have thought that that was something they could be working on, but I didn't expect that to be announced, especially not now. I just I don't know. It it wasn't even on my radar at all. And boom, there it was. All they needed to do was, they needed to pull a Metro Prime 4. That, that just needed the logo and I would have been happy. And this was more than that, so... So yes, so Nintendo had a great showing. And then for Tuesday through Thursday, I had my appointment and I got to wander the show floor, check out the different booths. Um, I didn't play any games that <laughs> were not in my appointments. I have moved past that. I am no longer a line person. I haven't been for years. I just, I can't do that anymore. I just can't justify standing in a line. Um, unless it's for work, and I have to, that I will, but I didn't have to this time, so I didn't. So for some of my appointments, I got to see Borderlands 3, I wrote a preview for Digital Trends. I got to see Lego Star Wars, the Skywalker Saga, I didn't get to play it. I got to watch an off-screen demo, which is not online, and it's very impressive, and I really wish you could see it, because it looked really good. I do have a preview for it, it's up on IGN, so you can check that out too. I also saw Dying Light 2, that was offhands, but also a very impressive demo. Uh, very ambitious, not unlike Watch Dogs Legion. I saw, what else did I see? That I saw Mario and Sonic at the Olympic Games 2020, whatever the long title is. I got to play that. I got to play that for like 20, 30 minutes, and I replayed a lot of those mini games. I think there were five available. Uh, karate, archery, uh, surfing, just uh, like a, a dashing one, the running one, kind of embarrassing, I can't, like 100 meter dash, I don't know, and then one other one. Yeah, no, I don't remember, but I got to replay those plenty of times, um, and then on the last day, I got to see Cyberpunk 2077, that was also off off hands, I didn't get to play it, but also very impressive. A lot of impressive and cool things there. Um, not like mind blowing, not in the way that last year's demo mostly was, uh, but still very, very exciting. And I have no issue giving CD Projekt Red my full trust in making this a truly good, compact open world. Cause that's kind of my, my big, worry is that we haven't seen what this game functions like as an open world game we kind of did in last year's demo this year's demo probably less so it was much more linear um that's my biggest question mark and but i, I like i don't i'm not worried i totally trust them uh, another cool thing for the last day of e3 i i did not get a nintendo appointment usually what they do is they have a booth tour where you get an hour to go up into their media area uh, and you, you're you there with a PR person and they walk you through multiple demos. So it's not like you pick one game, you have an hour to play, let's say, four games, 15 minutes each. So on Tuesday, I went to the Nintendo booth and I went and asked about any openings or cancellations. And of course, the answer was no. I left my business card and good hours and to contact me or whatever. Like, it, it didn't mean anything, and I knew that. Uh, those things never, never work out. Uh, unless you are, like, some high-profile person from a very big outlet or something. Uh, so, did that, let it be, and just hope for the best. On Thursday, I got a little creative. I decided to go back and this time take a different approach. And I, I wasn't being sneaky. I was, this is all truthful, uh, but I was just I was just more clear and a little more desperate. So I went over there and I asked the same question. Of course, no, we don't have anything. But this time I asked, hey, like, for me, the most important thing is the footage. Uh, just so I have gameplay captured. Would it be cool, and assuming the 
person who has the appointment is cool with that if I hopped in on another appointment and just recorded somebody else play. I don't have to play the game, I just need the footage. That's what I'm here for, primarily. And... Uh, the lady that was there was kind of like, you know, like, I'm not sure, like, I don't know if I totally get what you want, or like, I'm not sure about this whole situation. Uh, but there was a guy that overheard this, and he asked me some more questions, and... Long story short, he ended up giving me an appointment uh, the next hour. Uh, so that was phenomenal. I came back at it was two o'clock and I got to have a full one hour booth tour appointment. Uh, that's one of my highlights of E3 because I've had years where I didn't have an appointment with them and I went over and I asked and nothing ever came of it, but this time it worked. Uh, so I, I'm happy about that. And then for the rest of the trip, I actually did not end up staying the Friday after E3. Normally I do, I go to the beach or just hang out a little bit, but because of where I was located this year, this was west of LA, that means I, ha that means I have to go through LA to leave. So I was not interested in the traffic. I just, I woke up that morning, Friday morning, and I took off. And I did beat the traffic, so I was very happy. Uh, because even getting home after that six hour drive, I was exhausted. I was super tired. So I'm glad I did not sit through traffic. Uh, but I'm sad I didn't get to go to the beach again. Because that would have been nice. That would have been very relaxing. I also wanted to give some very quick thoughts about the future of E3. Because a lot of people are talking about how, you know, E3, it's, it's, it's done with. This style is over. Uh, Sony's out, Microsoft is kind of doing their own thing, EA's been doing their own thing, like, th this... E3 is becoming a thing of the past. And while I agree that there are some changes that need to happen for it to continue to work, I don't really agree with the general consensus that E3 is going to be changing dramatically in the near future. I think that would be the best thing, but I feel like the ESA is going to... They're going to drag their feet with E3. They're going to keep it going until it's really just no longer viable. Like, it's just embarrassingly not working out anymore. And so far, E3 is doing what it needs to do. It's providing a space for uh, people in the industry to present their, their stuff, their booths, whatever. There's media who have that one week that's completely focused on just preview coverage and everything, all of that still happened. Uh, even though PlayStation wasn't in the picture this year, it all still happened and it was all still just as, maybe not just as big, but it was still a huge event and I don't see why it's just going to suddenly vanish. You know, unless, <laughs> I mean, I'm thinking like, let's say Nintendo pulls out and they're no longer a part of it. I think that would be a pretty big blow because now you have the three major ones who are just kind of, they're like wishy-washy, not really there. Um, you know what, maybe E3 will turn into just, we won't fi focus on the big three, we'll focus on maybe the smaller guys. I don't know, it's, I don't see it leaving anytime soon. When I walked out of the press co or the show floor and they had the banner, Come back 2020, E3, July, whatever, June, June, my bad, it's in June. I'm like, yeah, that's expected, and there's gonna be one in 2021, 2022, probably 2023. Like, I don't see it just vanishing. I don't... I, that's why I always scratch my head when people are like, I wonder if it's gonna be back in 2020. I'm like, yeah, of course it's gonna be back. There's no reason for it, for them to just ax it, uh, in their eyes at least. Or in mine. I love E3. I think it's a great event, and yeah, changes need to happen, but I don't think anything drastic is going to happen anytime soon. So yeah, E3. E3 was great. I had a wonderful time. I got to meet a lot of people. I got to play a lot of great games, and I am going to do one more video where I focus on all the swag I got, <laughs> which is kind of dumb, but kind of awesome. There was a lot of good stuff this year. Uh, so I'm gonna show off everything that I got, which isn't too much, but enough to make a video. So uh, keep a lookout for that, and let me know what you thought about E3 2019. Thanks for watching.